From the home page of the app, you can manage your productions, open productions, and create new ones. On the left-hand side is a queue of all the productions you have created already. Uh, they live in alphabetical order unless you have favorited them, and in that case, favorites will pop to the top. If you want to edit your favorites, click here, go in and choose one of your favorites, and hit Done, and that will pop to the top of, of your list so you can find those that you're working with quickly. Or you can go to the search bar and find anything that you've been looking for there. Uh, to open any productions, just simply click on the box here, and it will open it up. Or to get back to your home page, hit this back arrow. It will take you back to your queue. On this page, you can see if you are if it's a charts and PDF or charts and staging score. If you're an owner or a collaborative, if it's been favorited, you can edit your settings. You can also create a backup. If you do that, that'll give you an opportunity to have a, a zip file that you could later uh, reinstate if you ever wanted to. It's a great idea to have a, a, a backup that you can create. Now, to create a new production, all you're going to do is just hit this plus symbol. You can restore from a backup quite easily. Say you've created a backup of something. You'll just simply go uh, find that file, which is the dot stage right file. You'll hit open and restore, and it'll take you and it'll install that back into your system. For now, I'm going to skip that. To create a new production, brand new, let's say we're going to call it uh, new hit show. And for this example, we're going to choose charts and PDF. If you're going to use the staging score, you could select that. But let's say we're going to use a chart and upload a PDF. And I'm going to hit Add. This will add this to my production. And now from here, I'm going to set up my production details. Who wrote the book? Lynn Ahrens. Who wrote the music? Neil Riley. Who wrote the lyrics? Maggie Herskowitz. Who's the director? Susan Stroman. <clears throat> and here you can go, you can collect, uh, get a logo, open it up there. So your logo will appear on any of your charts. If you have the theater name, you could set it, um, New World Stages. And if you have the dates, let's say we're going to be March 12, 2025. Okay, then next you're going to go to the next page, Stage Dimensions. And now you're, here's where you're going to enter the size of your stage. You can choose feet or meters, whatever you're working in. Let's say the size of our stage, the proscenium opening, is 35 feet. And let's say the depth of the stage is 30 feet from the front to the back wall. And let's say I want to show 10 feet of space on every size. So now if I click Edit on the permanent stage, this grid will pop up. So you see I've got the 35 feet here, 30 feet deep, and then I've got 10 feet of space in the wings for me to begin to work with. It's a great idea to make sure that you're using all the white space in your area. So for example, if I hadn't done a depth of 30, but say I did a depth of 25, and I take a look at it there, you're going to see I have this white space that's not utilized. If you don't utilize it on your permanent level, then this will be white space that you can't use for anything, like even for text boxes and that kind of thing. So it's a great idea to make sure that you really fill all of this with uh, possible space with this grid. So you see that's, that's, got, that's filled it up pretty well there. So now on the permanent stage editor, here's where you can draw your ground plan. So you could, by using the shape tools, you could go in and say, I've got a leg here on uh, the six feet mark. And I can copy and paste that another leg, and maybe another leg. And let's say I'm going to copy all three of those, put them on the other side. So I've got a matching set of legs there. <clears throat> I can also put a curtain here across the back. So I have a crossover. On this level, you want to put everything that doesn't move. So that might be fine if that's what I have. Now, you may have a ground plan from your scenic designer. I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. If you do have a ground plan from your scenic designer, all the better. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to hit this button, and you're going to select that file from there. Here's my JPEG from the ground uh, who, from my designer who uploaded this. Okay, And now um, it's going to it's going to automatically assume that it's using the dimensions that you have. Scenic Designer might not have used those dimensions, so you want to utilize measure from image. In this sense, all you have to know is the opening to one thing. For example, we know that the opening of the proscenium 
is 35. So I'm going to draw a line uh, showing that, and I'm going to say this reference is 35 feet. And then I click use these values. What it does, it does the value of the entire image. And I say use these values, and I hit save. So now that imports, it does all the rest of the math and allows me to simply drag that to center. So now I have my ground plan there that I don't have to do anything more with, and it's in scale. <clears throat> On this layer, you wanna put anything that doesn't ever move. So for example, you may have a, a, a lift or something, an elevator that sits center stage, and maybe it just sits right there and it's going to be used for putting your toes on sometimes um, for staging reasons. So it's a good idea to put that on really every layer that you can. Once you've got that set, you're going to back out of there. Um, you may want to change your markers and numbering. So the number line, which lands down below, the default is that there's a marker every one foot and shows zero at center. You can show the even numbers, the odd numbers, and you can see a preview of how it will look down here below. So for example, say you just want to have a marker every three foot, you can see these are the feet, and that means you'll have a zero, you'll have a one at three, you'll have a two at the six foot mark, you'll have a four at the 12, and I can choose to show all the numbers this way. So this gives you a chance to kind of see how, how, how it will look when you do it. In this case, I'm just gonna use the default, which is a marker every one foot, and show just the even number. So I'll see a two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, and so I want to I want to keep that. <clears throat> then I also um, want to show what my zero zero is because uh, my lighting designer is going to start their lighting at the proscenium number. Okay, so let me go back for a second. Let me save this and show you on the permanent stage. So see where this, where the proscenium line is, it's at actually eight foot back from zero, zero. So I don't want my zero, zero to be there. I want my zero, zero to be where eight currently is. So in order for that to happen, I'll go to markers and numbering. I'm gonna change this, I'll keep that the same. And I'm gonna say this first zero is gonna be at the eight foot mark. And then I'll hit save. So now to view how that's going to look, now you see I have, there's the zero and there's the zero, and now I have negative eight. So that allows me to actually put the zero, zero where it actually is on the stage. Once you've got your stage uh, dimensions all set, the next thing you're gonna jump to is set pieces. You'll notice that if you imported something, the set design is already imported as an option. Now here you can import other set pieces. So for example, uh, maybe there's another set piece that um, is used. Maybe here's a unit that the stage that the scenic designer created. I'll open that up, and again, so I'll give this a name, and I'm going to do the same thing: measure from image. Say I just know that this opening in this doorway is six foot two inches, and I'm going to click again. Use these values. That does the rest of the math for the whole rest of the image, so you don't have to worry about it, and you'll save it. So now Helen's unit is saved in my set piece gallery, so I can utilize that. I can also create set pieces. So for example, if I have props or, or things that I want to track, I might, for example, utilize this. So you'll see this grid, 13 by 16, and I can just create some props here. So there's a number of things that are defaulted in here. Let's say I'm gonna just use a chair and I'm gonna, I'm gonna number my chair. So what I'm gonna do is drag it down to the bottom of zero, zero, and it goes really between two and two. I can resize it if I know the real size of the chair. Let's say that's a pretty standard size chair, but I wanna give this a name. So I'm gonna add a text box. I'm going to say number one, a chair number one, and maybe I'll make it bold, and maybe I'll make it a little larger. So then what I do is I drag that into chair number one, and I'm going to give this a name, chair one, and I'm going to determine the dimensions. I'm going to say it's two by two. Basically, it's going to crop wherever I put the mark. So I can put it a little bigger. So I'm going to use 
the width is two feet and the depth is two feet. And it's going to crop everything that's between two and two. So when I hit save, now chair number one is going to be seen as its own thing. If I hit preview, this is what it will look like when I put, when I put it on a chart. So you can add your set pieces and props. Anything that moves can live here. Next thing you're going to do is jump to your performers. I can add a performer. Let's say Helen. And what's the text that's going to go in there? Let's say, let's say I just want to go H-E-L. And maybe I'm going to make her a circle. Maybe I'm going to make her yellow. And I can change the size of the text. You want it to be as big as it can possibly be within the color you have so that as you get it on the stage, it'll be recognizable. And let's say I'm going to save that. So now there's Helen is saved as that color. And I can keep doing that. I can also import uh, an image of somebody. So for example, uh, say I want to take somebody's headshot and, uh, and give them a name. I can save that. So then that becomes the icon for that performer on the stage. The next step down is to enter your scene. You have to have at least one scene in order for start. So double click, and let's call it scene one. Hit return, scene two, the cottage, whatever you want to call it, or that could be the name of the scene. So you'll enter at least one scene. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to do your chart settings. <clears throat> the chart settings are the things that'll, that'll show on the, on the chart. I can turn off my number line so you don't see it. I can turn off the center line so you don't see it. Or I could turn on the number line, on the center line, on the vertical, on the horizontal, and on the horizontal number so I can see the whole grid on my chart. Or I can do what the default is, which is to show the center and to show the number line. Chart numbering is done automatically. If you want to have your own manual chart numbering system, that's great. Just be sure that you type something into each one so that the system can find it. Um, and you can also change your point of view from being the audience's point of view, or you can flip it around to show just the performer point of view. So you choose which, order, which, uh, which uh, point of view you want to see. And you can turn on to always show your notes down there in the bottom left corner, or turn it off so that you just show on select pages. Um, here you can turn off that floating number, the performer placement number, on or off. You can also determine how detailed you want that number to be. It could be 1.5, 3.5, or you could get really detailed, 1.25, as detailed as you want it to be on your chart. You can also turn on the body direction, which shows you a little guide on where the front face of the of the performer is. You can turn that off or on. You can also turn off uh, showing breaks when line shapes overlap. So for example, if two directional arrows are overlapping, uh, one of them will show a break if it's layered on top. That means that person gets the priority. So if they cross paths, that person gets the priority. You can easily change the layering. So you can do that as a great way for you to, to keep track of that. So all of those things can be done in your chart settings. <clears throat> uh, the other thing you can do is, is manage your collaboration tools. You can add collaborators. So simply all you'll do is just go in and you'll um, um, add uh, the email of the person you want to invite to join with you. You can choose to make them a master collaborator. This means uh, the, that collaborator can also add other collaborators of their choice. Uh, you are the owner of the production, and so you can give somebody else the power to also bring other people or not. You can also choose this person to not be able to uh, create PDFs or to only do it with your approval. And so uh, if, if you turn that on, you can tell them, OK, they, get, they can print maybe one on their own without asking. And by the way, when they do print, if you've turned this on, each, each time they print, they'll get a, a watermark of their username across um, each of the pages. So you can turn that on or off. That's important for if you're doing copyrighted material. You can turn that off or, or on. You can also just choose the access level you want them to have. 
A limited version means that the collaborator will be able to view the production and they can make their own notes on the private script and make notes. Uh, there are some personal notes on charts, but it won't be attached to your uh, original. You can give them full permission, meaning they can edit your script. You're essentially sharing the same script as they are, or you can really customize it. And to customize it, you can give them a private PDF, meaning they can have their own clean copy of the script to mark up as they will, or they can share your PDF and you can collaborate together and see each other and edit each other's work. Uh, same thing is true of the scenes. You can decide to give them access to edit any of the scenes so you can turn those off and on. And then what, whatever settings you've decided to go, you're going to hit save, and then that individual will get, uh, will get an email saying they've been invited to, um, to collaborate with that production, and they'll have the ability to go in and, ha and get, uh, access it according to the, the tools that you gave them. Uh, you can also copy your production. So it's easy to do. You can just go new show. You could do national tour if you want to do, or a different version of the show, and then you can change the dimensions of it. So you can make a copy of it. So you have different copies, different versions of it, and click copy. That'll save in your file. Or you can decide to transfer your ownership. And when you do, if you put that the email of that new person's address, it will actually remove it from your file and they will act, they will actually become the owner of it. So you won't be able to see it. You can decide to add yourself as a collaborator if you turn that on and, or remove all the collaborators and do it that way. You can also choose to delete your production, which you should do very only after you've verified that that's exactly what you want to do. Um, so just be, be cautious about hitting delete your production. Um, once you've done all of that, then you should be able to go back. Now I've created this uh, production. If I go to view my charts, you'll see there's the two scenes that I put in there. You'll see that there are no charts, but if I hit plus and hit blank chart, you'll see there's the ground plan that I imported with my elevator center stage, and I'm ready to go there. And I can from here start adding my actors and dragging them around the stage. Um, so that's uh, in terms of charts. I can also uh, PDF. I can go in. I don't have a PDF yet in this production, but I can easily go in here, import a new PDF. And so I'm going to go in find uh, find my um, my PDF. Go in and find my PDF and upload it. And there it is, ready to go. The default is light cue and sound cues are there, so I can begin working on it immediately. Now notice also on my charts, um, I, can, I have also those set pieces are there. There's Helen's unit. So there's Helen's unit. I can also utilize chair number one. There's chair number one. So I have those ready to go. So my props, my set pieces are in there all ready to go.